while ago, I was chatting with my friends. We ended up talking about clothes and I shared that I was feeling really uninspired and just generally meh about my wardrobe. Put things on and just feel like it wasn't quite right, not quite me and not really know why. And we were chatting through some solutions and a friend said, you need to get on Pinterest. And another one said, you should do some mood boarding. And I had this light bulb moment because that is exactly the process that I teach in my Fresh Nest interior design e-course to help students find their interior style. Exactly the same. So that kind of made me feel better. I was like, oh, I do know this. I know how to handle this. I have a process. I'm going to follow my interiors process for my wardrobe. And I thought it would be fun to take you guys with me. I'm just going to preface this by saying I am not a fashion blogger or influencer in any way, shape or form. But like all of us, how we dress is a really important way that we share who we are to the rest of the world. It is, I also believe, quite closely linked with how we design our homes. So I found this process to be incredibly revealing and I am looking forward to showing you more. So the process generally, the first thing is to drill down and figure out your style. And you do that through thinking about what you've always loved since you were a kid, shapes and styles. You do some Pinterest mood boarding. You come up with some words that represent that style. You then analyze what you've got and look at where things that you own do fit and where things really don't fit and what the gaps are. And then you make a plan and that involves a mood board and a design plan. So for me, I'm going to go through the same process, but with clothes in mind. I went through some old photos of me and tried to remember what I liked when I was a kid, when I was a teenager, when I was at uni. It's been useful to remember things like how much I value comfort. And also to just spot that through the decades, geez, decades, that I've always liked stripes, scarves, a good vintage bag. It's all been really useful. All right, let's get into it. So some of these pins are like 10 or 12 years old. And I've just decided to go right back to the bottom. Lots of skinny jeans. That kind of really dates it, doesn't it? I've also spent some time pinning some things that I absolutely love. So I'm just looking through this to see what is is standing out. So straight away, lots of denim. A wider sort of baggier jean fit as well seems to be coming up. It's relatively neutral, lots of that indigo blue color. Uh, flares, I think they're Vans, I still love Vans. I love this, the sort of baggy jumper shirt, baggy trouser, chunky boots look. Um, similar here, look at those Birkenstocks. Lots of Birkenstocks, need to get some Birkenstocks. I used to have some when I was in college in sixth form. So again, it's quite neutral, but there's definitely bits of color coming in. There's blue, yellow, red, um, that's feeling really good. Lots of brown. Oh, I love that red, the red on red. I also like a long line. Uh, I like a long line cardigan here. That's actually Asia Barber, follow her on Instagram. Also noticing quite a lot of shirts. Uh, and I also like a neckerchief, big denim dress. Happened to be wearing one of those today, love them. There's Africa, oh my gosh, she's like my style icon. The Vitamin D Project on Instagram. Some quilted jackets, oh yeah, loads of denim. I love denim, denim's coming up all the time. So generally I would say it's very comfortable. I am done with discomfort. And flat shoes, I love an elasticated waistband, a baggy, a baggy shirt. But I also like a bit of playfulness. I love a, some kind of neckerchief or hair bow. I think these red shoes are very sweet. I like a lovely pop of color. There's lots of linen. More long line cardigans. I really like a long line cardigan. Getting into some more summer looks because we just come out of summer. Um, similar kind of vibe. I probably do err a little bit on the side of a tomboy look as well, which I like. I like a bit more of a a slightly masculine look, more denim shirts, more Birkenstocks, baggy dresses, and also love a really good knit. The next step is to analyze what I've already got. So what that involved was me taking out every item of clothing I owned, every single one guys, and taking a photo of it. So what I did, I maybe should have spent some time ironing, but who, who has time for that? I've, I've grouped it all together. So here are the shirts, shirts, my dresses. Here are my current dresses. And then knitwear. So here's some of my lovely knitwear. 
and then accessories shoes oh my shoes more accessories so now i've done that i can see what i've got that really links to the mood board that i've put together and the things that do not fit and i can remove things from my wardrobe in this case, I have removed a couple of things. I sent a few things off to the charity shop at the beginning of the summer. So what this process has enabled me to do is analyze what I have, because even though I have a relatively minimalist wardrobe, I know lots of people have a lot more clothes than this, it, I still lose things and forget about things. And getting it all out like this, taking pictures of it all, putting it into this document, just has given me so many ideas of how I can put things together, but also where I think pieces aren't gonna work. Um, already when I, when I took pictures of some of my tops, I was like, that top is not comfortable. It's going. I don't want discomfort in my life anymore, for example. Okay, so obviously I have created this in advance and I've separated it into spring and summer. So I basically went through the process of finding some of the outfits that I absolutely love the most. And then I've brought them over and I've just used the pages function to get rid of the background. So this is my spring summer look see if I can make it a little bigger. So again, there's linen here. I like the, the long skirts, some red shoes, a cap, a shirt, some vans. And I've summarized here at the bottom what brings all of those things together. And um, more spring, summer. And then this time I've, I've included some dresses, some bags, again, big baggy shirts. Um, neckerchief and then I've gone on to autumn and winter and pulled together some of my favorite looks lots of denim long line outerwear I love a double bit of double denim a lovely pair of barrel leg trousers I like a pair of trainers a big chunky pair of boots and I've got already this smart bag and then I've kind of summarized my style words comfort relaxed oversized neutral colors but with some pops of fun color and then a flare. I hate that term, but it's like a, a nice earring or a neck scarf. But generally the basics are quite neutral. And then I kind of add a bit of color and interest with my um, accessories. Now it's time for a try on. outfits there's more clothes but I am exhausted now and look at the state of my room but it was worth it I have some thoughts
One of my first realizations is I think I want some bands in a different color. I noticed trying them on, it sometimes clashed with some of my other pieces. And I think I want a pair of bands in just a plain color. So that's the first one, a useful realization. Then a few sensory things. I am quite a sensory person. I might be done with trousers that don't have an elasticated waist. Just never want to wear them. And I find them so uncomfortable, but that might have to be a long-term project because it means replacing a couple of trousers that I love the shape of, like these green ones. But yeah, also um, fabric. This Lazy Oaf dress, I love it. I bought it from my sister-in-law. It's like sort of silky. It's like 92% polyester. And I just don't like the way it feels. It has pockets. And I think the gingham design is really cool. But yeah, that's, that's on the pile of maybes. One of the sensory thing is I don't like things with a high neck. I can't wear the high neck anymore. I just find it too scritchy scratchy. What else? I still also really want a pair of um, ballet flats like on my mood board. And I think I want them in like oxblood red. I've got a few things in oxblood red and I love it. Other thoughts are, I feel so inspired. I have got so many good outfits. And when I did this in the summer, I, again, felt so much more confident about what I was wearing. I remembered so many more different outfits and combinations. And not once this summer did I say to my husband, oh, I hate all my clothes, I'm not going to wear, I feel horrible. Not once. So I'm confident that going into autumn, it's going to be the same thing. Definitely for me, out of sight, out of mind. Putting on everything has been really nice. And I also really love like photographing things, putting things into the document. I don't know, the nerd in me really enjoyed doing that, but it also helps me to remember. <clears throat> it helps me to remember what I've got. The other thing I've done is as I have tried outfits on, I found myself going back to Pinterest to look for similar outfits. So like I've got a pair of white jeans. So I went back onto Pinterest and searched for some white jean inspo because I love these jeans. And it gave me some ideas of how I could style them and things that I could wear with them. So I've now added a few extra outfits to my board. So that's me, I'm a bit knackered but it was brilliant. It was really, really useful and I really recommend it. Okay, so it's a few days later. I managed to get everything away and I also did some decluttering as I went. So I was able to take away some things that I knew no longer worked in my wardrobe or just felt uncomfortable. They have now all been washed and folded. They're ready to be donated. I've got a really good sense of clarity. So how does all of this relate to interiors? I am an interior designer after all. I am not a fashion influencer or do fashion in any way. The actual clothes don't matter. It's more about the process that I've gone through. So even if you watch this and are like, oh, that's really not my style, try and hold on to the process that I went through because that's the helpful thing, whether you relate this to your wardrobe or your interior style. So the main thing I wanted to put through in this video is the methodology, the process. And that is to spend some time exploring your style before you jump into shopping and mood boarding. So drilling back down into what's made you happy as a child, your favorite spaces as you grew up or favorite looks as you grew up. And that is such a helpful thing because it means that when you are making these style decisions about your wardrobe or your home, it's coming from a really unique place of your personality, your experiences, your happiness, your memories. And when that is reflected in your wardrobe or your home, it makes a much happier wardrobe and home. The second thing that's really important about this process and methodology is the assessing what you already have. So in, on, in wardrobe terms, that is taking everything out, looking at it with an objective perspective and thinking, does this actually make me happy? Does this fit in with my style? When it's a home, it's about looking at the furniture, the art, the furnishings, the decor that you already have and saying, does this fit? Which pieces fit? Now, in my process for both my home and my wardrobe, I found that there are ways that I could make things fit by just rethinking them. So for example, with my wardrobe, pairing a certain pair of trousers with a top I would have never paired before. Or, but in an interior, it might be changing around an armchair to go in a room that's going to be really nice next to a wardrobe. This 
clarity is a really helpful thing because you figure out what works, that what you already have, where it fits in and where it really doesn't and what needs adjustment. And then finally, it's about making a plan. And this should involve a mood board, whether you're doing this for your home or your wardrobe. So you make a plan based on what you have and you link what you have to your overall style mood board. And that is how you do it in a sustainable way rather than one that's led by trends and impulse purchases. And you go back to this plan again and again. And this plan should be an evolving document, uh, something that you are leaning on and using regularly. So for example, with my wardrobe, I'm probably going to be checking this out every couple of weeks to get I outfit ideas and then as the season ch um, changes again into spring I may duplicate this document and remove some things or put some new things in according to how I've changed and what's in fashion and what's caught my eye. With your interior it's about finding out your really true interior style and stating that in a document somewhere that you can refer to often. And this becomes like a guiding light when you are making decisions and it makes things so much easier. Then it's about, okay, so this is my interior style at the moment. This is how my current pieces fit in. And also this process helps you identify any gaps. So in my wardrobe, I now have a really concise shopping list of things that I want, not need, but to to incorporate in my wardrobe this season that fits with my mood board. Things like Birkenstocks or red ballet flats or a red jumper. With your wardrobe, it might be, ah, okay, so to get the look I want, I really want to have art in this kind of style or by that artist. Or I really, really want a piece of furniture that is really sleek and modern or mid-century or farmhouse or whatever it is. And then you can start to look out for that. And it stops you from spending unnecessary amounts of money or being pulled in by any interest that you've seen on Instagram. So that is how I have used my interiors style methodology for my own wardrobe and reaped to the benefits, if I may say so myself. Hopefully you have picked something up from this video, whether it's to do with your wardrobe or your interior style. The main point being, it is always worth taking the time to do a plan, create a mood board, delve into your style. It saves loads of time and money in the future. All right, good luck and see you next time.